The Skin to Skin was um, started in Bogota, Colombia in the 1970s when the hospital ran out of incubators for premature babies. And so they were trying to figure out how they can keep these babies warm. So they put the babies on <clears throat> mom's chest. So these were moms that were just gave birth, still in the hospital. <laughs> Okay, so we hear experts talk all the time about skin-to-skin -skin contact. We hear about how it helps breastfeeding. We hear about it in the hospitals. But do you know all the benefits of skin-to-skin -skin contact? Today, we talked to Anna from Bonzi Baby, who created these amazing onesies that help with skin-to-skin -skin contact. She's going to talk all about it and all about the benefits of skin-to-skin -skin contact. So I learned a lot, and I just recommend everyone checking out this episode. And then of course, stick around at the very end. We have our mom tales of the week, which is our new fun segment where we post questions on Instagram and Facebook to get your take on motherhood, allow you to share your fun stories and so much more. So without further ado, here's my interview with Anna from Bonzi Baby. So just to get started, tell us a little bit about you and then we'll kind of go into uh, what you do. Mom of two, I have um, an almost five-year-old and a seven-year-old. Um, we live in Brunswick, Maine, small kind of town in Maine, a uh, well, little ways outside of Portland. So prior to starting Bonzi, I was a clinical social, I mean, I still am a clinical social worker. I've done kind of all sorts of different work, worked in all sorts of areas in social work, but my main training was in like at attachment um, and helping a lot of times adoptive parents um, kind of build that attachment with their with their new baby or or older child and oftentimes you kind of have to revert back to a lot of the stuff you would have done with um a baby when you're taking in a new child and trying to build that that attachment with them but so that's where like most of my training was in so after I had crew my son who's seven in the hospital they really pushed skin to skin I hadn't heard about it at all prior to um having him I was one of those moms that was like I don't like, I'm, I'm going to figure it out as motherhood comes. I'm not going to read any books. I'm not going <laughs> to buy anything. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go back and do it that way again. Um, I was very unprepared. Um, but so, yeah, so learn about skin to skin, obviously attachment, you know, building a, a strong attachment from the beginning was, I mean, that's important to anybody, but just knowing and seeing um, it go very wrong. <clears throat> and how detrimental that can be for a child's entire life. Um, you know, it was really front and center in my mind. So wanted to do lots of skin to skin. We live in Maine, it's cold. And kind of that's where Bonzi with, came out of, was trying to keep him clothed while doing skin to skin or not, you know, they make you, so he would almost always fall asleep um, when on my chest and then laying him down. I was, you know, like with my first baby, very scared of blankets. <laughs> So just trying to find something that can keep him warm and alive. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so for anyone that doesn't know Bonzi baby, can you kind of describe, and we'll obviously like link, you know, everything in the show notes as well so people can see it, but can you guys, can you describe like what the clothing looks like or kind of what like the style is? So people are, can kind of. Yeah. Realize so it. I, I actually have one right here. Um, and I know this is a podcast, so. Yeah. But it's watch. video too. So people that okay. are watching can watch. <laughs> yes. Um, so it's kind of like a kimono top, I would describe it, but we have instead of like zippers or snaps, um, it's a little just like a little strip of velcro that opens up and the two flaps open so that the baby's belly and chest are exposed. And then it's just super easy. That was the big thing for us was that it was just super easy to close back up if they fell asleep and you, you needed to lay them back down. And then the pants, <clears throat> we have a, a gown bottom too, but are attached and this is elastic. So it makes for really easy diaper changes where you're not, you can kind of it's elastic enough to pull their little legs out and change their diaper and then just kind of squeeze them back in. So you're not dealing with my husband who helped me design this was very adamant that it not have any snaps because snaps were not his favorite when we have babies. Um, so we, we figured that out and yeah, so it's, it's pretty simple, but the Velcro, the Velcro flaps are really what sets it apart from any other brand. 
Yeah, no, that's cool. So like, what was that moment for you that you kind of decided like, oh, this is like something that we don't see on the market that we want to create? Like, was it kind of, you're thinking about it for years or was it, you know, one day it clicked and you're like, let's just do it. Like, so how was yeah. that process? So it was really after, so it was in my, you know, we, I come from a entrepreneurial family. We're always starting strange businesses. Most of them have worked out now, but now for my other family members, I don't want to say they have strange businesses now, <laughs> they have successful businesses, but it, you know, so in the back of my head, you know how you're always thinking of like a gap in the market or <laughs> something that's just not out there yet. So when crew, my son who's seven was born, it was in my head, like somebody should make something like this, but I, you know, busy had owned businesses in the past. And I think what I didn't want when I had a, my first child was you never, your business is never done. You never get to go home at the end of the day and be like, work done, <laughs> did a good job. <laughs> yeah. So knowing that I really, I didn't, I didn't want that when I had a newborn, I felt like that was overwhelming enough. And then two and a half years later, uh, when my daughter Willow was born, still nobody had come out with a product like this at all. And I was, you know, much more comfortable being a mom trying to figure out, you know, what I was going to do for a career now that I had two babies at home and, you know, daycare is so expensive and I wanted to be home with them, um, at least for the first few years. And so we decided to go for it. So, you know, worked with, with a company to help us come up with a prototype, tried it on so many different babies, lots of input from friends and family, came up with the design and then went forward with it. We launched, I think it was December of 2019. So just about two years ago, like right before the pandemic hit. What timing? <laughs> so, you know, in the end, I would say it worked out just fine for us, but definitely we had plans to to, you know, my thinking was that we would approach lots of stores and try to get into those baby boutiques and then build our way up to like larger retailers. But that really, really changed when the pandemic hit. And I think, you know, especially those small businesses just, you know, it wasn't a time to go and ask them to buy my product. <laughs> um, they weren't open. Um, so we really focused on uh, direct to consumer building our website out and it's, it's worked out great. That's awesome. Yeah. Too, with having such like a, a gap in the market, you talk about mm -hmm. the really big, the benefits of skin to skin contact and no one ever thinks, or I'm sure other people have thought about it, but it's like, you know, if you do the skin to skin and like you made a good point, but if they fall asleep, then you're trying to dress them while they're asleep or you're trying to like, you know, maneuver them. You don't want to put blankets in the crib. So there's all these like other hurdles. So that's a, an awesome idea yeah. there. And so you kind of talk about benefits versus like things that can be detri detrimental. Like if you don't do the skin to skin or have that connection. So can you kind of talk about first kind of some of the benefits and then kind of on the opposite end, like, you know, when you don't see skin to skin or that like, you know, physical contact. I mean, I don't want to say that like, if you don't do skin to skin with your baby, they're <laughs> doomed for life. Because I think that moms, if you're with your baby, you're picking them up, you're breastfeeding them, you're, you know, I, I think what we hoped Bonzi would do was just to, you would look at your baby in it and you would remember, oh, let me just open their little chest up while I'm breastfeeding them and, and get that kind of those extra benefits. And I mean, so the, so skin to skin was, um, started in Bogota, Colombia in the 1970s when the hospital ran out of incubators for premature babies. And so they were trying to figure out how they can keep these babies warm. So they put the babies on <clears throat> mom's chest. So these were moms that were just gave birth, still in the hospital and put just a blanket over them so that mom's body heat would warm the baby. Um, and they found that these babies just thrived did just as well or better as the babies in the incubators, because not only did it keep baby warm, but it helped, you know, stabilize their heart and their breathing rate. They're feeling mom's heart rate, heart, you know, just like they were in, in the belly, um, higher blood oxygen, oxygen levels helps baby absorb and digest nutrients better helps them initiate breastfeeding. It helps mom build up her breast, her milk supply it helps baby cry less. I don't know if I said that already. Um, 
helps with, uh, they experience less pain when they're getting um, like medical procedures. So if they have to get their like heel pricked or shots um, and all that. And then the long-term benefits they found. So there've been two long, I believe two long-term studies done on kids who they put um, in cohorts of getting skin to skin for at least it was they were large amounts of time, six hours a day for, I think like the first two weeks and then babies who they didn't tell the parents that that was an expectation to, so it wasn't that these babies weren't getting right. anything, but that wasn't, they weren't told that to be part of the study, you have to do um, skin to skin for six hours a day. And they found these kids 10 years later had, um, improved brain functioning, were less impulsive, had a more reciprocal relationship with their parents where they found that they, the, the mom and kids just communicated better and could kind of figure out what each other needed easier. So it's really, and then the 20 years down the road, they found that it was wild. And I'm, <clears throat> don't quote me. On any, I know we're on podcast, but this, <laughs> I can give you links to these studies. Um, but like the kids who received skin to skin had higher educate, you know, had higher education. They were able to hold jobs for longer periods of time. They were incarcerated less often. And the study really related that back to just that early attachment and attunement with mom, that mom and baby were just able to figure each other out in an easier way right from the start. Also for mom, lower rates of uh, postpartum depression. And so if you're not depressed, you're able to attend to your baby easier and it's less challenging. So yeah, I mean, the the benefits are just, they're amazing. Um, and I think we're just learning more and more about, about them. Wow. Those studies are like are so impressive. That's really cool to know. I mean, cause I, I mean, a 20 year study. I mean, that's, that's really cool that they've been kind of, you know, playing around with how beneficial skin to skin contact is. So, and I think it all goes back to like, you know, what do they say? This is the decade of the brain and that we're really learning that attachment is just the most important building block to for development um, and that relationship with your mom and dad or whoever cares for you. But that's just, we just need it as humans. <laughs> Definitely. And I've heard, I have heard like on the other, the, the other end, obviously like, you know, always like holding your baby and take care of your baby is some kind of mm-hmm. contact or skin to skin. But on the other end, like, you know, babies that, you know, don't either don't have, you know, parents around or don't have that connection, or maybe they're, you know, not held as often. It can be hard to have that, you know, attachment as, as, um, easily kind of early attachment. If you don't receive it, it's one of the things that is almost impossible to make up later in your life. You know, when you think about people with personality disorder, like those kind of character pathology later in life, it's Mm -hmm. almost always related back to they didn't get what they needed in the first few years of life. And those first few years of life, I think that we're just now kind of realizing are so, so important. And our, I mean, you know, I would say our society does not make it easy for moms to be around their babies. (laughs) Um, We oftentimes have to put them in a daycare where maybe there's 10 other babies that you know, one or two people are caring for. And not to say that that's going to break your kid forever, but you just need those, those first few years are so, 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 so important. And it's just, it's, it's important to be aware and to be thinking about that when you're thinking about who is taking care of your kid, because, you know, they need to be attended to. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm sure too, like, you know, cause yeah, like you said, society doesn't necessarily make it easy for moms. Like a lot of times, you know, we have to go back to work. We have to, you know, have our children and other people's care, but making sure that, you know, when we do get to be around our children that we're more, you know, maybe present or like have something like scheduled, like skin to skin or, you know, be present in that, in that time, um, in those, in those moments for sure. And so I was curious, so you talk about the first few years. So is there benefits or is there like a, a t- like, do they say like, okay, the first, you know, six months really focus on skin to skin, or 
it, or can that benefit them through the first few years? Like when you're, when you have a toddler, um, really focusing on that, you know, skin to skin, or is there a, um, a difference or is there studies based on that at all? What I've seen doctors really recommend, but then I think you can go by like what works for your kid. Cause I know when my kids are melting down, yeah, no, I don't take their shirts off anymore. <laughs> But I mean, who knows? It might help. <laughs> but like that closeness and that touch, you know, does. And, you know, am I always in the mood to have that with them when they're flipping out on me? No. But anytime you can slow down and and just really be with them, what I've noticed is the behavior goes away much quicker than when I'm like, stop it, go to your room. <laughs> But so obviously the first hour after birth, um, a lot of specialists recommend that if the baby's healthy enough to keep them on your chest for that first hour. So then take them to weigh them and all of that after the first hour. But if it's possible to have the baby just go right up from birth to your chest and stay there for the first hour, then three to six hours a day, kind of for the first week um, of of life. Um, and then two plus hours spread, like it doesn't need to be a solid two hours. It could be, you know, what I like about Bonzi is it's like when you're sitting down to breastfeed them, open up the, open up the flaps and just stick them, you know, have them bare, bare chest to bare chest while they're eating. And you do that, you know, what, six, six times a day for 30 minutes. That's, two out, you know, that's probably over. Math is not my thing. (laughs) And then for premature babies, they really recommend six months plus making sure you're getting in that like two hours a day with them. And I think personally, um, you know, up to a year, what there's no harm in more, (laughs) there's no harm in longer. Yeah. Yeah. And are all these studies, are they based on mom and baby or what about, you know, like father or a caretaker, babysitter? Is it just that kind of connection or is it mostly the mother? I think what they're finding is there's huge benefits for dad too. It helps, it releases oxytocin in dad as well and helps dad connect and bond with the baby and feel like he also has a way to comfort the baby. I think when you're breastfeeding, that can feel like sometimes the only thing that will calm the baby down is the boob. Um, and I think that dads can can put the baby on their chest and and learn how to, you know, experience that, that calming with their baby as well. So I'm not, I don't know of any like long-term studies of outside of like the mom, mom and baby, but I think if mom's not available, which happens a lot, any caretaker that, that can experience that with the baby is, um, beneficial. I mean, probably I would say the primary caretaker, I don't know, if you would want your baby, you know, it'd be up to you. Maybe you'd want your babysitter doing that, but, you know, I think that, um, the primary caretakers, so mom and dad, or if it's adoptive parents, or if it's the grandparents who are going to end up raising the baby, whoever the primary caretakers are going to be, it's extremely beneficial for. Yeah, definitely. Where, so I'm sure there's a lot of people listening that are like really interested in like learning more about Bonzi baby, where they can get it. So where can our audience get Bonzi Baby? And we are, um, we're at Bonzi.com. So B-O-N-S-I-E. So it's kind of a play on bonding and onesie. So Bonzi. Oh, <laughs> oh, I love that. I was wondering, yeah, where it came from. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. People are like, Bonsai? But <clears throat> yep. So Bonzi.com is the, that's where you'll find the widest selection. And we've got a lot of bundles that offer discounts, but we're also on Amazon. We'll be in Bye Bye Baby online um, sometime within the new year. And then we're we're slowly popping up in different boutiques around the country, um, but consistently bonzi.com. <laughs> oh, cool. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. I, I just think like having all those benefits and making it easy and cute clothing, you know, uncomfortable for babies to wear. I think that's, that's an amazing uh, idea. So that's awesome. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that with us. And, um, so I always like to end these interviews with fun thinking questions, I call them. So if you could have a billboard made today where you could share one tip with moms everywhere, what would you have it say? What would I have it say? 
I think that, could I have it concise enough to be on a billboard? Probably not. Um, <laughs> but I think that what works for me a lot of times is you just have to be good enough for your kids. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to do everything perfect. You got to show up most of the time <laughs> and be there. Try to be consistent um, and loving, but you know, it's okay to mess up. <laughs> It's okay to have a messy house. It's okay to need a break from your kids. It's okay to turn the TV on. <laughs> um, that, you know, if your kids know you love them and that you'll be there for them, that's enough. Yeah. If they're, you know, I find your kids kind of, I'm learning this with my own kids, they kind of are who they are. <laughs> and it's our job to just, guide them and love them but lowering your expectations like you know I want my kid to be a soccer star well he hates soccer <laughs> so it's probably not gonna be and I spent a long time being frustrated by that but then it's like why do I care I think that that just just guiding them and loving them is our main job I love that yeah I think that's great on a billboard <laughs> It's a huge billboard. We can put all kinds of things on there. It's <laughs> <I'm> like rambling. <laughs> no, I love it though. It's perfect. Kind of letting go of those perfection, like expectations of being the perfect mom, because like, I think you made a great point about, you know, you're down to the core, your kids are who they are. And then if you just, you kind of guide them, you be there for them, love them, support them. I think that's, that's amazing. Yeah. I think that was one thing that like when the pandemic hit, it was almost like, I had been so stressed out that I didn't have them signed up for like the 8 million different things I wanted them to be signed up for, like gymnastics, guitar lessons, learning a second language, you know, all those things. When you sit down with other parents, you're like, your kids are doing that, your kids are doing that, plain heart, plain heart. And when the pandemic hit, it was almost like, I just let it all go. And mm -hmm. I'm really trying not to get all back up again. <laughs> all right. And just being okay with how it yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And of course, I know you kind of, you mentioned Bonzi Baby and where people can find, find Bonzi Baby for themselves, but where can everyone follow you guys? And then any other links that you want to share as well? Yeah. So we're on um, social media, Instagram, Facebook, that's all at Bonzi Baby. So just add the baby to the end of it. And we're working on building our TikTok following. <laughs> Ooh, that's fun. <laughs> a little old for that and youtube as well at bonzi baby awesome well cool and we'll put all the links below as well and thank you so much for coming on anna it was awesome talking with you and this is so cool like i want to tell some of you about this i love oh, it thank you thank you so much for having me all right guys it's time for our mom tales of the week we reach out to you guys on instagram to get your funny interesting take on motherhood and this week we said share the funniest story your child has told and we got some good ones. First one is Joanna. Yesterday I was getting dressed for the day while my three-year-old was on the potty and I decided to wear a black and white striped shirt. I walked into the restroom to check on her and she looks at me and says, mommy, why do you look like a zebra? I told her sometimes moms like to dress up like zebras, LOL. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. I know I've talked before about, you know, kids will just say what's ever on their mind. They'll say the honest truth. And I guess you just reminded her of a zebra. So I guess there's worse things to compare your outfit to. Okay, number two is from Erica. One of my young cousins wanted to go fishing, but his dad is religious, so he had to go to church. The little guy said, Jesus will understand. I can go fishing because I'm fishing for Jesus. <laughs> I love that. I love that, you know, he had a very valid reason and he wanted to just let him know, you know what? Jesus will understand. I like that. Number three, Annabelle. My children were playing outside in the sunshine and I was sitting down watching them. My little girl sat next to me and chatted away happily until a wasp flew nearby and gave us a fright. Okay, I have to pause right there because gave us a fright <laughs> reminds me of the parent trap. She's like, oh, you gave me a fright. And he's like, I gave you a fright? So I'm just, you know, I don't know. I don't know why that just popped in my mind. Parent trap. I don't know. 
you know, it's just a funny, funny phrase. Anyways, um, my daughter said, we should put these bees in jail. That way no one will get hurt and they will learn a lesson. They can't keep getting away with this. Hey, you know what? If I could put bees in jail, I think I would too. I mean, I get it. They're great. They, you know, pollinate and all that. They're really great for the, for the plants and flowers. But when they're just like irritating and they're just annoying and they sting you, let's put them in B jail. Let's see what we can do there. Number four, Mary. My son is in first grade and his homework that day was to write down something about himself that made him special. My son wrote, I like to play football with dad. I like to build Legos. I am God. <laughs> I don't know if he meant to write good, but I was dying. <laughs> That's hilarious. Hilarious. I can't even talk. That is hilarious. I am God. I would like to know the follow-up of that question. Did you ask him what he meant there? You know what? I think he meant to write I am God because maybe he means like I, I can build Legos and then for that little Lego town I am God because I'm building like how God builds. I don't know. That also made me think of when I was, I don't even know, elementary school age, we had to do a Father's Day present and we had to draw our dad doing something he loved. And then we had to answer these different questions about like, what's your dad's favorite thing? What does your dad love to do? And I drew, <laughs> I drew my dad mowing the lawn because I just thought he loved doing it because he did it every week. I didn't realize like you actually had to mow the lawn. It was like a chore. And I remember we're all sitting around and I gave it to my dad and it's like my, and he read out loud, he's like, my dad loves to mow the lawn. And he's like, oh, yeah, you're right. I, I do love to mow the lawn. I mean, it's not my favorite thing, but I love it. And I was like, wait, mowing the lawn's not your favorite thing to do. I was like so shocked and like kind of hurt because I think I thought it was like gonna be the best gift ever. Like, oh, I'm drawing him mowing the lawn. Kids, that's so funny. Okay, number five, Carol. My daughter lost her first tooth. She asked me what the tooth fairy did with teeth. And before I could think of a response, she was already giving me her answer. She said that all the teeth were going into the Magical Teeth Museum and even wrote the tooth fairy a note to be very careful and make sure her tooth was on main display. I don't know where this girl's imagination comes from, but it was cracking me up. I love this girl's imagination and she sounds very clear in it. So I would just keep going with that. It kind of sounds like there was a movie I saw once, I think, or in a TV show where they showed the tooth fairy like building her house with teeth. And it was really cool. I love that. That's great. Okay. Number six, Mara or Mara. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. Okay. Not my kids, but I overheard two little kids, I'm assuming siblings, in Target. They looked about five years old. The one kid was making squeaky sounds with his shoes on the floor and goes, I love this sound. The sister then says, I love the sound you make when you shut up. <laughs> I love the sound you make when you shut up. I had to bite my tongue from laughing. That... <laughs> I know you shouldn't laugh, but that's hilarious. I love this. That's that's pretty clever. That girl's going to be a comedian or something. Oh my gosh, those big sisters. Okay, and so for this one, this is actually really funny. So, not this story so much. I mean, it's funny, but it's these were really good. So a couple weeks ago, I was telling I was telling my assistant about this funny thing that I did when I was a kid and this letter my teacher wrote to my mom and I was describing everything that happened. I don't know. My mom probably just told me multiple times over the years and I didn't say anything to my mom about telling my assistant it. The next day I'm driving somewhere and my mom texts me a picture of the letter and was like, remember when this happened? I just found this letter. That's so funny. And I was like, are your ears ringing? That's really weird. Anyways, I'm going to read this letter because it's kind of a funny story from when I was a kid. Okay. So my teacher wrote this letter to my mom. She said, hi, Mrs. Knight. 
Just to let you know, I overheard Krista arguing with Brittany, another girl in my class, about who was smarter, me or you. Britt asked me what those purple lines in her hands are. I said veins. She went back to Krista and told her what I said. Krista said, my mom said they were called vines and she knows me more than Miss Ruzika because she's older, plus she's a mom. I can like picture it. So I guess you have me beat what a crack up first graders are. Have a great day. My mom kept that note for, let's see, it was in 97. She kept that for a long time. I'm trying to do quick math in my head. 14 years, wait, 24 years, oh my gosh. She kept that letter for 24 years. Yeah, that's a long time. Don't judge my quick math skills. And it was just like a funny story growing up that I was so sure my mom said that they were called vines and she knew more because she was older and she was a mom. So tell your, all your moms out there that don't think you're, or that doubt what your kids think of them. Your kids think you're the smartest person on earth. That's just proof right there. So don't doubt yourself. And thanks for tuning in guys and I'll see you next week. Hey guys, if you found this or any episode of Mom Talks with Krista helpful, please like, comment, subscribe, and of course, share it with your friends. We release new videos every single Wednesday and our new podcast is out every single Thursday. So lots of different ways you can catch us. And of course, if you're not following us on our socials, go ahead and follow us there. We've got tons of new content for you every single day. And finally, if you're watching this and doubting yourself, you're doing a great job. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week.